Hello everybody, we are Christopher and Sarah, founders of the Vegan Warrior Academy and hosts of the 2018 Vegan Warrior Virtual Summit. The goal of this summit is to support, empower, and inspire vegans to spark new pathways for both personal and global change so that we can create that vegan world we all wish to see. And we're really excited because today we get to interview Stephanie Stephanie Red Cross West, marketing expert, speaker, and the founder and managing director of Vegan Mainstream, a unique marketing consulting company, especially for vegan entrepreneurs and professionals. Thank you so much for so coming. So great to have summer. you, Stephanie. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited about this opportunity and extremely excited about the work that you guys are doing. Thank, Thank you, you so much. This is a topic too that we personally love and we love diving into it. So in what ways do you help and support individuals in launching and maintaining a vegan business? Um, I'd probably say we work on three different specific fronts. Um, number one, just to kind of lay the groundwork is this is really our passion as far as my team and really my passion as well. Um, when I started kind of the entrepreneurial path, my thing was, can I bring together my love for being an entrepreneur, my love for marketing, and my extreme love and passion for veganism together? So being able to bring that together, my idea was, how can we be a support system for vegans out there that want to start businesses, that want to start businesses that they're passionate about? And kind of the reality of that is they're passionate about in all different walks of life. So whether you want to be a health coach, whether you're an accountant, whether you're a financial advisor, whether you're into fashion, the idea is that we're not just limited to food businesses, but businesses can be across the gamut. And maybe that's because I'm into this vegan mainstream <laughs> perspective that if we want to take it to the mainstream, we need to be everywhere. Mm. So what we try to do is support everyone in all of their different industries by first coaching them through the process by helping them kind of understand the structures that they need in place. Because for many entrepreneurs, they're awesome at making vegan skincare, but they're not necessarily have the experience of what it takes to run a business, the structures, the systems, the tools, and also the stamina that you kind of need to run a business. So we try to kind of open the door on that process and explain it in more of a very simple way to kind of coach them through step by step how to do it. Now for others, it's not so much the step by step they need. We try to help them with a little bit on the accountability side. Mm -hmm. So because what happens is when you run a business, and especially in the beginning when you're a solopreneur, there's not really anyone there kind of double checking, watching over, like in a traditional you know, work environment where you have a boss or a colleague that can nudge you along and say, you know, we were supposed to finish that on Friday. Um, or someone who pushes your limits, who says, maybe you're ready to do more public speaking because your voice and your message is awesome. You gotta get it out there. So a lot of times what we're trying to do is really help people with being accountable in their business of not just executing and getting work done, but making sure that they're pushing themselves to new heights so that they grow personally and their business grows and they don't become kind of stagnant mm -hmm. and only kind of go to one limit or go into one track. So we really try to, I would say, help with that. And then the last thing I would say is around expertise. Um, since I'm an entrepreneur too, I've stumbled through this process. I've learned things over the years. I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. I also, you know, have all this corporate blood running through me since I worked for, you know, Fortune 500 companies. And I want to be able to help people learn from some of that. I want to be able to say, hey, I tried these five things. And the reason I recommend this is because I've tried it. I've tested it or I've had a client who's done it, and this is how we approached it, this is how we tested it and tried it. So that way, you don't have to maybe go through the 20 steps I went through, <laughs> or the, <laughs> or the you know, steps that someone else has gone through. You can maybe skip ahead a little bit because we can kind of guide you down a path to say, hey, instead of exploring all the options, maybe look at the top two or the top three. We're not here to tell a person only do it this way, because I do believe building a business is kind of a great opportunity to chart your own path. But I do think it's fun and helpful at times to help people narrow down or prioritize so that they know where to go first or where to go second 
or not to maybe waste their time on things that are maybe, you know, something they should be doing in year two or year three of their business. Oh, oh man, wow. everything you said resonated with us on a profound level. Yeah, being entrepreneurs, it's something we probably could have used from the beginning. But, you know, again, it takes grit to get on through. And, and uh, you know, it's just wonderful all the support that you're able to give uh, to people. And so let's say I'm a vegan and I have just this wonderful idea. I want to tap into the marketplace and start a business, but I am just feeling super overwhelmed. So where do I even begin? There's a couple places to begin, but the place I like to begin is on the customer front. I like to think about what impact do I want to make with this business, meaning the type of people I want to impact, um, the industry I want to change. The idea is thinking about it from an impact standpoint, not only is it a little rewarding, but I also find it starts to lead you down the path of getting used to setting goals. And when I say impact, I mean, if you're going to be a health coach, how many people do you want to train? How many people do you want to work with? And the reason I say how many is it'll help me understand, do you want to work with a few people one-on-one, -on -one, interact with them and take them through the process? So I want to work with like 10 or 15 people and get them to the point where they are comfortable, they understand the plant-based lifestyle, and they understand how to run it through every aspect of their life. Or you may say, I want to get out there to a ton of people. I want to work with thousands and thousands of people and coach them through this process. And, and therefore, when you start to think about that impact and at the level of impact you want to do, I find it's a little bit easier to start walking back and saying, okay, then I know how to structure my business. If I want to be more of a boutique if I want to kind of have more boutique sales and create vegan purses, then maybe you're going with a higher end product. And the reason I'm going boutique is because I want to make sure that people feel great about their fashion. But when they feel great about their passion, they know that animals aren't being harmed. They know that we're concerned about the environment and the impact it is. So we want to be fashionable. We want to look lovely. But at the same time, we don't want to hurt anybody in the process. And being able to kind of write down and document that and being able to kind of articulate that not only is it great because if you ever need to get investors or help you know explain your mission to other people you'll have that kind of speech or that elevator speech down but you'll also start with your impact to understand how you can measure your business moving forward you can understand that hey uh, and also it puts you a little more customer first it puts you in the perspective of who are you trying to help and how are you going to get them there? Then you start to go into the basic business tackling process. You're gonna say, okay, if I know who I'm gonna impact, I know what scale or what level I wanna do it. I wanna do it in retail, I wanna do it online. You know, I start to get into some of those basic questions. Then we're starting to break down the business and say, okay, what does year one look like? At the end of year one, what would make me have a year one party? <laughs> What would make me be running around with high, high five and everybody? What would that look like in year one? And I say year one is sometimes I feel like we plan too far out. We think of like the five-year plan. And the five-year plan is awesome. Don't get me wrong. But what happens is we haven't started the business yet. We don't know the rhythm yet. So if you've got to get that rhythm down first before you start to say, how do I replicate that success? So what I want you to do, what I, at least what I want most people to do, is start with something that feels like it's within reach and a year is within reach that you should be able to say, I want to make sure I get my first 50 customers. I want to make sure that if I'm building a blog or I'm building an asset like a blog or a website, I'm able to reach X amount of people per week or per month on that site. And now we're also starting to talk in metrics, not just in feel goods. If we're selling a product like purses or skincare, how many do you want to sell in the first year? And I don't want people to say, I'm going to sell a gazillion of them or I'm going to sell 10,000 of them. I don't want you to go overboard. I want most people to set a goal and hit it. So even if it's 50, even if it's 100, I just want you to hit that goal because I feel like in the beginning, that feeling and process of knowing what it's like to go through your entire business sales process from creating the product to launching the product to selling it to servicing your customers, loving your customers after the process, getting the feedback, making changes, 
going through that process is so important so that once you get that feeling, you know what you want to replicate and then you know what you didn't do so well <laughs> and you decide potentially not to do that moving forward. So the thing that I really noticed and what I distilled from what you're saying was clarity and how important it is that you get really clear because if you're not clear on what you're doing or what you even want to do, then the people that you're trying to serve, they're not going to be clear either. And I love also the setting of the goals so that you can reach these goals and feel good about yourself as you're moving forward. And Absolutely. You know, the you mentioned mistakes, right? And I know us in the beginning, we made plenty of mistakes. And so what's the biggest mistake business owners make in the beginning years? Well, I'd probably say, well, the first thing I would say, and um, I was writing down notes beforehand, but one thing that just popped in my head that I'm dying to say is that I think we assume we shouldn't make mistakes. And I think that's such an important thing to maybe just mention quickly is that we think we all should come up with an idea. It works great. It's, you know, through the moon. Everyone likes our posts. We're getting 20,000 likes on every post. <laughs> you know, people are, every, we had 100% open rates on our emails. <laughs> you know, that we, we assume these kind of extreme numbers and extreme responses to what we're doing, as well as we assume the first time we do it or the first few times, it's always going to work out pretty good. And the idea is there's a part of the process of running a business, it is not succeeding at times. There's a part of the business by making mistakes. There's a part of a business, and some of that's because we have to take some risks. We have to try some things, especially for many of us as vegans. We're like trailblazers out here. We're doing stuff that has not been done. We're creating industries that didn't exist five and 10 years ago. So we have to understand that a part of that process means learning along the way and getting better and understand that that is just how it is. If we think of anything that any of us have ever learned over the years, if we learned how to swim, if we learned how to play basketball, if we learned how to knit, if you learned even how to cook the first time we all started doing plant-based foods or vegan foods, maybe those weren't our best meals. <laughs> and that's okay. The idea is over time we've gotten better at following recipes. At Over time, we've gotten better at being able to sample, or maybe we've gotten to the point where we can just grab the spices and you know, throw them in there and then it comes out perfect. So I think we have to realize that that is a part of life and therefore it's also going to be in your business process. And then, oops, sorry, I didn't know. I was just gonna say that's so true, very true. Thank you for saying all of that. <laughs> And then I would just say some basic business stuff is probably two things. Number one, I find that people don't spend enough time with their clients in year one. And what I mean by that is literally sitting down, talking to them, interacting with them, having conversations with them, even if it's something as basic as doing a Facebook Live or a YouTube Live and getting feedback on what you're doing and your products. Mm. I find that we're almost a little bit afraid of our customers sometimes <laughs> and we don't want to rock the boat. <laughs> um, so I find that people start to spend so much time trying to make everything perfect, trying to make every campaign perfect. And they're not literally talking to people. They're not hearing why people like their products or services so that they can either make changes because maybe the products like 70% really good but there's 30% tweak if they made it, they would, if they, excuse me, if they spent time with the customer, they would hit it out the park. And why miss 30% out of fear? Because you're afraid one person may not give you a five-star review. <laughs> so I think getting comfortable with the idea that you have to spend time, you have to talk to customers, you have to pick up the phone. If you're like in a coaching client, small business, you know, B2B relationship, have phone calls with people. Ask people, do you mind if we sit on the phone for 15, 20 minutes and you tell me about your experience? If you're more in a transaction-based business, ask customers if they'll show up on a quick Q&A webinar, if they're willing to show up even for a Facebook Live chat. Mm -hmm. If you're nervous about it being public on Facebook Live, then do it like a webinar. Do it like a Zoom session where everyone gets the link. You don't need a gazillion people there. You can just have 10, 15, five. You're just trying to get in that loop and create a process around that loop so that constantly in your business, you're talking to them.
Because if you're not talking to customers, you can miss your marketing. And it's really just because you're not in touch. Mm-hmm. Solid, solid advice. Really good advice. <laughs> so now let's let's switch this over to current business owners. So what advice do you have for current vegan business owners that are listening right now who are struggling growing their business? I would probably say for current vegan business owners, um, the number one thing I would talk about is the money. And I bring that up because many of us, we don't start the businesses because we want to be billionaires. We start the business because we love what we do, we love our community, and because many of us want to change the world. We want to be a part of that movement, a part of doing good, and we realize that we have something to give. So we have a hard time charging for our services. We have a hard time charging a reasonable rate for our services because we're scared that we may feel like we're taking too much, that we're pulling too much out. And a lot of times I have to tell people that we all deserve a living wage. Mm. We all have mortgages, we all have light bills, and we deserve to make money to pay for those things. As well as it's so great, and I think, I think people forget that your customers would be very happy to put their money in a process, in a place, or pay it to you because they know it's going to the right cause. It's going to someone who is aligned with their ethics, who's aligned with what they're passionate about. So I'd rather you charge what you should be charging in your business because that's many times why people are struggling is they're undercharging. They're offering a lot of free services. They're often not charging market rate because they feel like, well, I want to make it accessible to everyone. And I tell people, you can make it accessible to more people if you make the money. I'd rather you charge the customers that can afford it and then use that money to offer scholarships. Use that money to offer opportunities for people who couldn't afford it. But because you have the money flowing in, you can do more. You can use that money even to donate to your favorite charity or organization or nonprofit. I I think sometimes we get caught in the fear of what money can mean and the dangers of it. And it's just like anything, we have to be careful um, of tipping the scale. But I don't want people to be afraid to charge what their services are worth. And also customers value things that you charge for. Often when you're giving away things for free, people don't show up, people don't use the product, <laughs> people you know, don't really dig in like you would hope. So often putting a reasonable price tag on it makes people proud of what they paid and even more willing to submit reviews and talk about how the value of what they received and what the price of what they received super exceeded the price to a certain point that they felt moved to tell the world about it. And I want people to to create that scenario in their business, to create that experience in their business instead of people thinking, oh, it's just that free thing that I can get access to. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, you took the words right out of our brains there about talking about the money and the charging for your services. I think that was hands down one of our biggest struggles Mm -hmm. when we first started. And, And that's such wonderful advice. And I hope that people really take that into consideration. Out of curiosity, if more vegans harnessed their unique gifts and talents and created, um, I guess, more connection in the vegan entrepreneurial realm and more vegan businesses start popping up, where do you see the vegan movement headed? Um, I probably would say we would be in an area where we would be able to start displacing products. That's the biggest thing that I think we have a huge opportunity to do, products and services. Um, I don't want to leave out my folks that offer services out there (laughs) Um, because the key is if we can start displacing, if you just take it as a simple shelving kind of concept, um, you know how now we go into the store and we got that little corner where we have the shelf on the bottom (laughs) that we all got to bend down and squat down to to take a peek at (laughs) to get our products. But imagine if we are in a traditional store, we're in a traditional retail outlet, And the idea is our products are front and center. Our products are at eye level. What happens is the vegan and plant-based products, when they start to displace these other items, 
individuals that are maybe not t-shirt wearing vegans like you and I <laughs> are going to start grabbing these products. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're going to start using these products because what we're trying to do is get people to choose them for everyday life. We want people to see them as their go-to product and service. And if we start to do that, what happens is we reduce the need for many of the products and services that are out there that are dependent on industries that harm animals, that mistreat animals, that truly take advantage of not just animals, but our environment that are really sucking the resources out of what we have. And if we can displace that, we have an opportunity to not only help others lead down this path, even if they're not ready to you know, to start carrying around the vegan flag and, you know, changing their, li their license plate <laughs> to something that says vegan. But what happens is we can get greater participation and get people who truly can support the cause in multiple ways. What and, a fresh perspective. And I also find that vegan entrepreneurs are more conscious about mm. consumerism. They're more conscious about where their products are coming from. Who are, who are the people creating these products, where it's coming from around the world. And so imagine displacing those objects you were talking about and replacing it with conscious consumerism, conscious entrepreneurship. I just, the, the, it just, the possibilities are endless. It really is. And even employment, if you, that's the other thing, is we have more vegan businesses, we have more vegans that can work for vegan businesses. Mm -hmm. We can now start to kind of increase the wealth opportunity in our community, as well as give people the opportunity to work in companies that align with what they're passionate for, passionate about. Um, because I think that's one of the things that's really tricky as vegans, sometimes we're working in A, B, and C company, either A, because we've worked there for years and we've risen to a level that there aren't enough vegan businesses out there for me to kind of be a VP of marketing in, <laughs> or what we're struggling with is we want to really work for businesses that we are passionate about, but there's just not enough career opportunities and diverse opportunities. Because mm -hmm. um, I love how there's a ton of restaurants that are popping up, but not everyone wants to work in the restaurant industry. We want to allow people to work in all the industries that they're passionate about, because all of these industries impact our environment and impact animals. So the idea is that we should be able to work in everything I and mean, we should be, be a vegan hairdresser. You know, <laughs> the idea is it is limitless. And I think I don't, I, I guess I just want to make sure people understand that there's no roof on this. Um, if we take charge and start starting these businesses. Absolutely. Yes. And so we like to end every interview by asking all of the speakers that have come onto this wonderful summit, what does it mean to you to be a vegan warrior? Hmm, that's a tricky one. I would say being a vegan warrior, I guess it goes back to what I said before about being a trailblazer. I really think being a vegan warrior is being willing to do something different, to do something new um, and push through even though it's hard, but also being willing to understand that if there's a need for it, we can fill that, vil that void. And the fact that if you're gonna fill that void, that it's an opportunity for something not just, it's bigger than you, it's bigger than just our, you know, my town or my city. The idea is that there's an opportunity and a path for me to drive substantial change in the world if I'm willing to step up and be a warrior. Mm -hmm. If I'm willing to step up and say, yes, I can drive change. Yes, I can do it. And realize that it may be hard. I may have some bumps and bruises and scratches. But the idea is along the way, the greater good that I do, and the experience that I'm going to gain from it is going to be not only valuable to me, but valuable to my entire community at large. And really, I'd probably say the whole movement. I think sometimes we think that we, to change the world, we all have to you know, try to run for political office. So we have to do this or do that. And I think the idea is that we can all be warriors no matter where we are. We can play in any size pond that we want to play in. The idea is we just have to be willing to be that trailblazer to kind of chart some of those unknown paths and know that it might be tricky. But the idea is that if we're willing to do it, 
the reward for us in the community is just going to be like, it's going to be just, it's just going to be so cool. It's so awesome. <laughs> so I don't know. That's what, that's what comes to mind when I, when I think about that. We right. love it. You're pumping me up. That's know, for sure. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and so do you have any other updates that you'd like to share um, in regards to what you're up to now or what you have coming in the future? Anything that you'd like to share with our listeners? Yeah, um, I'd probably say the biggest thing that we're up to and we're trying to do is just offer more resources to the vegan business community. I think what we always have struggled with is trying to spend enough time with individuals. And I've been doing a lot more speaking engagements lately, uh, which is one of those things, me pushing myself to do more of. Um, and what I'm finding is people need kind of access to some of this information, this knowledge, some of the experiences that we've been having. So we've been offering more free webinar series. We've been offering more free online courses to help some people get started. And then if they're ready and they want to go to the next level, they can obviously pay for our paid ones. But our goal is to make sure that they have some good free starter packets so that people feel empowered, they don't feel alone, and then they also feel like this is something that's doable and they can do it one step at a time. Because one of my big things is, yes, you can build this big massive corporation and all these teams and you can, you can envision yourself having this huge business, but the reality is to get whatever you believe is your finish line, it's a step-by-step -step process. So I'd rather people start small, smart, tight, start lean, and run two campaigns and do great. Run one social media account really well, then add a second. Instead of trying to manage four accounts and you've never managed social media before, I don't want you to overwhelm yourself. I want you to start smart. I want you to have a success and then build from that success. So I'm hoping some of these free um, webinars and these free courses can help people kind of tap into a success early, and then they can use that to continue, that kind of feeling, excitement, um, to hopefully tap into future success for them. Wonderful. Perfect. Well, that's great. I really appreciate you providing that support for the vegans that want to become entrepreneurs or obviously those that are already entrepreneurs. And we just really appreciate your time, Stephanie. And thank you so much for coming on. And to follow Stephanie and her journey, you can go to veganmainstream.com and also be sure to download her free manual, Taking the Leap, Nine Tips to Help You on Your Way to Vegan business success. And you definitely want to grab that. It's awesome. And lastly, if you want to own this interview and all of the other interviews, you can click the link below and get your all access pass. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for coming on. Absolutely. I really enjoyed myself and I'm looking forward to sharing the summit with my community as well.